Good morning, everybody. And uh, following on from that fantastic presentation from Louise, um, I, I just think um, it's a wonderful opportunity now for us to discuss a topic which I feel very passionate about, and it is the uh, integration of livestock within the farming system. Uh, my name is uh, Hayden Evans. I'm an organic farmer, and as well as the day job, I also undertake work with the Soil Association certification here in Wales. Uh, for those who don't know, the, the Soil Association certification scheme is one of the UK's um, leading certification bodies, which inspects thousands of organic farms and food and drink businesses each year. I also have the privilege of chairing the Welsh Organic Forum, which is a body of like-minded businesses, farmers and members uh, throughout Wales, looking at the current issues regarding the challenges of organic farming. If anybody is interested in joining the forum, please use the chat button and the secretariat, David Owen, who's here today, will come back to you. For the purposes of today's session, we will ask the speakers to share with us their um, farming systems. Uh, as we know, about 30% of the planet's land is used for livestock production. And I have three speakers with me today, Lynn Jones, Elvin Davis, and Alex Higgs. Elvin's presentation will be in Welsh. And just to uh, give you warning, we're having slight communication problems with Elvin, which I'm hoping we can resolve during Glyn's presentation. So without any further words from me, Glyn, perhaps you would take us through um, your farm and how you see the livestock integrated within the farming system. David Owen, who's here today, will come back. Good morning. So my name is Glyn Jones and uh, I'm farming uh, with my wife, Aira, Newhouse Farm, where you we're near Narbeth in Pembrokeshire, and uh, we farm um, we farm as organic dairy, and we supply our milk to Omsco on a on a PWAB contract, which is uh, um, something that enables us to export our milk should we need to throughout the, the world. So we, I, I uh, if we go on to the next slide. Um, our, um, basically, we, we farm 650 acres and uh, 450 of that is owned. Uh, we, um, uh, I'm a third generation to farm the farm and uh, I like to think that, um, you know, our farm is very much suited to, uh, an, uh, is, is suited to an organic system. We've been organic since 1999 and oh. with... Hello, can you hear me? Yeah? Yeah, we've been organic since 1999. She's not here at the moment. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, and uh, we've um, supplied... Uh, we've... Hello? 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 Apologies, yes, it seems like you were muted for a moment. If you, yeah, if you'd like to unmute. Sorry, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Can yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so we've been organic since 1999, and uh, our system is very much a mixed system. Um, my, I've spent most of my life, my working life, uh, bottling water at Princess Gate Spring Water, and we sold that business here. Uh, Four years ago, so I've uh, I've had the farm with always with water sources and uh, water catchments uh, as a key um, a key issue, and uh, you know it's really set me up very nicely for NVZs. But our mixed farm is very much um, I, I like to farm with a view of a of a life cycle. So you know the animals must fit into our our ecological uh, cycle so that we use the manure to feed the soil and the soil to grow the crops and then the crops to feed the cows and we replenish that um, back into, into the soil. At the end of the day, our soil is our, is our gold and with, with, without that being fed properly with manures and, and nutrients that we produce, then you know, the whole system falls apart. And, and I think that's why um, you know, we see uh, self-sufficiency uh, as as 
our goal, you know, being um, being able to um, being being able to to grow good crops efficiently, but with uh, our environment in mind. My passion is is the environment, and and uh, I I just love to see you know us working growing growing good crops, but with the environment very much uh, uh, being looked after and 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 uh, ecological systems being uh, being protected we do get 67 inches of, of rain a, a year and yet we're only we're three miles from the Pembrokeshire coast when you know can you hear me I seem to have an echo here yes Hello? I can hear you. I can hear you. Loud yeah. Okay. Can we, if we move on to the next slide, then please, uh, it'll take us to the animals. So we have two hundred dairy cows in the herd, and it's an all-year-round calving um, system. We like to put the cows out on grass for for two hundred a minimum of two hundred and sixty days. Some some of those days they may be in at night, depending on on how much grass we've got around us, but. Our system is very much geared to the you know, cows being out as much as they can. And if it's wet, we'll bring them in or they, they'll come in. They have the choice. Uh, I, I do think that the animals will choose to do whatever they want to do. But they do like to, um, you know, be out whenever they can be out. So we, we're at reasonably, um, I won't say a medium um, uh, production herd at seven and a half thousand liters, uh, and we'd like we'd probably feed then a ton and a half to two ton of concentrate a year, which we produce. We produce about sixty percent of that on the farm. Um, we we rear all our own young stock, so it's a closed herd, and we used we use all sex semen on the cows so that we minimise any bull calves. And then we just make sure that we have enough young stock coming through for the herd replacements. And then we put the rest of the herd to beef. It is a pedigree herd. Always, we're striving to be a full pedigree herd. Um, and, uh, but we would have some uh, daily short horns and uh, some jerseys in the herd as well. I just happen to like, I like daily short horns and jerseys. So, you know, we have quite a few red, we have quite, we have, we have quite a few red Holstein Frisians, and uh, or somebody Hazel Thomas is saying, "Can they? Can you not hear me?" I can. Hazel I can Thomas. hear you. I can hear you, Glenn, loud and clear. I can hear you, Glenn. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. So we have yeah some jerseys, some uh, short horns in the herd, and uh, again, uh, I very much like to keep um, uh, you know. A, Dare I call it a multicolored herd? Uh, we have, we do have a few cro uh, crossbreds, but they're mainly we're mainly heading towards a, a pedigree herd. If we can move on to the next slide, then please. So, growing the crops, one is 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 where I uh, I have a passion. Um, you know, I think that growing uh, is, is nothing more rewarding than and, and going and uh, tilling the soil in the spring and harvesting a crop in, in the winter, in the, spring, in the autumn and, uh, you know, yielding great. But this has to work very much with uh, an ecological system. So we, we, we do make sure that um, we try and uh, encourage um, flowers wherever possible. So we'll plant peas with barley. So you'll see that um, the butterflies and cabbage white butterflies you'll see around those peas is phenomenal. We do have two lots of uh, bees on the farm. Uh, and again, sort of wildflowers in the hedgerows are, are key and keeping decent margins is also uh, something that we, uh, we're very, um, it's, 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 it's important to us. You'll see uh, from, from the first slide that we got is that when we do plough a field, uh, it's very important for us to feed that soil. So when we do grow a crop, I want to make sure that that crop has uh, as good a chance of, of yielding a decent, uh, 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 a decent crop 
and yield uh, as possible because there's, there's no point in the costs are still the same to harvest it whether you've got half a crop or a full crop so we we do end up putting um, a, a slurry from the farm on the, on the plowed ground so that the young seedlings have a chance to grow and then also then once we we've once we've grown those once the crop is established we'll go through it with them um, with a harrow three or four times to make sure that the weeds are, are not um, are not establishing. And once you've got a canopy of, of cereals, then uh, you, you'll find that the weeds are suppressed. Uh, we haven't grown it this year, but in, in over the past sort of three or four years, we have grown fodder beet as well. Uh, the, the, the reason we didn't grow it this year is that it didn't quite fit into my rotation. So we've given it a year out. Again, we've done it with the view that... Um, it does give us a yields of between 25 and 30 ton an acre if 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 we get a good year and uh, i it's reasonably easy crop to grow with um with with the minimum amount of of uh, of work it does need to be weed and as you can see we we built we built our own interro cultivator there uh which we which got a, which is a steerage hole type system and we'd go through the beat probably three, three to four times uh, with that machine. Again, once the canopy is is uh, is established, we'd um, it, it, the crop will just uh, control itself. But if you also look in that picture, what we do then is put a cereal around the headland again, uh, allowing for biodiversity, and also it does sort of give us. Um, um, uh, standing a chance to harvest it then without making too much muck and and damage to the headlands of the of the field. Yeah, in in uh, we always like to um, harvest it as soon as we can in in uh, August September, but we will dry the crop and uh, store it rather than store it moist. The reason for for drying it is that I, I like to feed it through the parlor and uh, it does give us flexibility to feed it whenever we want. So we built our own grains. We built, built a grain store. And as you can see in that bottom slide there, then uh, in, in there is we, we, we combine the peas and barley. So the peas will give us the protein that we need to uh, feed the cows and, and the, 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 um, the, the barley and, and uh, wheat. There's also with the wheat in there that will give us the, the starch. Winter wheat is something we have grown in the past. However, we'd probably not grow it again because what we have found in growing winter wheat is that the open soil over the, over the winter months gets leached too much and you lose too much of the nutrients. And again, in an organic system, we struggle to get enough uh, feed back in for the crop so it ends up being half a crop and again for the for the hassle i think we'd we'd consider just doing spring wheat in the future triticale is also something that we've tried but that's um uh we found that uh mixing that with peas which i thought would make a good crop um the straw wasn't strong enough to hold up the, the peas like with the winter barley what we did do because it was a poor crop and it was an experiment this year, uh, we did direct drill peas then into the winter wheat in May. And that turned out to be a, a brilliant way of, of, of mixing wheat and, and, uh, uh, and, keep, and keeping the protein levels up. Spring oats is something we've also grown. We also grow. Uh, our thought process behind that is that it's, Oats is the easiest of all to grow organically. It doesn't need particularly high nutrient levels in the ground. However, you don't get particularly high nutrient levels out of the crop. It's something then that we'd feed to the cows when they're out at grass. So through the spring and, and summer months, we tend to feed, um, feed oats uh, through the parlor. Again, could you move on? to the next please slide please Beth. So my passion be in the environment. So whenever I well, there's two passions really farming efficiently and the environment. So every bit of ground that I see as as um, productive 
oh, we need him to be productive. I try to make sure that's as productive as possible because um, it does allow us then to do um, some environmental projects and look after some ground, uh, look after the rest of the ground for, 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 um, um, for the best of, of our future generations. So we, we have created and dug some ponds on the farm. And uh, again, we, we, we cannot believe how biodiversity uh, comes so quickly to water. Uh, and we've had loads of fun uh, just watching the ponds develop. And uh, we've seen dragon, you know, loads of dragonflies, um, kingfishers. It's just, it's just a, a natural draw to wildlife. Uh, it's fantastic. If, if it, it, I think that is something that I'd like to see us do more of on the farm. It's just little catchments of water. It just it just gives us so much uh, so much um, flavour to the countryside and to our fields. So with our arable when, uh, with our um, rotation, we do use a lot of red clover. And red clover in that in, in that second picture there is just a high, uh, it's just a, such a fantastic crop for peas for the bees sorry bees are um, just the 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 well the honey that they make from there is unbelievable and uh, it's again bees are. There's plenty of people that will put hives. They're not our hives, but uh, I don't pretend to be a beekeeper and I, I, I'm not sure I want to learn, but there's plenty of people who will do that in conjunction with ourselves. Um, we've also done a little bit of, it's a minor bit of agroforestry in that we planted some fruit trees in the, in the corners. Any, any bits of, of land that we feel is unfarmable, we're looking to do something for the environment. And then the final top picture there then is uh, is a field we've managed for the last 30 years as a hay meadow and that surrounds the Princess Gate Water factory. And you'll see, you know, the biodiversity of uh, of that field uh, is buttercups there. What we've also done over the last, and I and I manage that for, for Nestle. Uh, so what we have done over the last uh, couple of years is introduce some more varieties, uh, some yellow rattle, and some uh, some other uh, wildflower uh, flowers to, um, to just give it a bit more colour and, and a bit more diversity for for bees. Um, as I said to you, our our farm is just three miles from the coast. Yet we run we are the second highest point in Pembrokeshire. And you'll see in the bottom uh, left hand picture there a trig point on on the land that we farm, and uh, there's our heifers overlooking uh, overlooking. Uh, South Pembrokeshire. Again, for the environment, we have a wind turbine on the farm that supplies the uh, Princess Gate Water Factory. Uh, again, something we 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 built in uh, 2014, and uh, uh, you know it's something that uh, I think we had a, we had a nightmare getting planning for it, but I, I really do think uh, the planning rules should should allow more of these to be built. And that brings me to the end of my little presentation. Thank you, Hayden. Thanks, Glyn. Thank you very much. Um, it's uh, quite, quite a presentation and uh, I, I'm so pleased that you've uh, brought such a variety of, um, of issues to the forefront there on the farm. And uh, once we go through each speaker, I'm sure you'll have quite a few questions, but it is good to see the animals within uh, your system of rotations um, and of course what you're doing alongside it with bees and uh, wind power etc so many many thanks for that presentation Glenn uh, gratefully received um, thank you uh, we'll, we'll move to our next speaker if I can we did have some tech difficulties with Elvin but I'm, I'm hoping that um, we can now um, be okay with Elvin so uh, just to introduce Elvin Davis, Elvin farms organically at St. Clair's. He was actually born and raised on the farm, but left the farm to commence his own engineering business and company. And at one point was employing 50 people. But uh, I'm pleased to say he's returned back to his roots. And uh, he started the farm in full time in 1995. And to use his own words, 
he changed his system quite quickly because he didn't like the way agriculture was heading. So Elvin, if you can hear me, uh, the floor is yours if you'd like to do your presentation. Yeah, I can hear you, Elvin. Thank you very much. And my remiss to say Elvin's presentation for everyone is in Welsh. No, sir. I um, Dim ni si vai, uh, and we are dim no si vai. Um, in the inferno and organic, I can pasture for an PLFA and with you, Parva, my bowid, a hona busy gown, the Trehuna now, uh, to die at the Nenor, and I keep my Gothic in Cal in Vita, you Parva. Silvair a quith manun porir clodiae a cod a popeth um, a dwi meddwl bod yn lawer mwy iach, um, mwy tawel uh, ar ôl troi i'r system uh, barfa am ei bywyd. Uh, Biwch yn y tyriol iawn. Uh, uh, Biwn yn yr allydd a byw a por, uh, ar barfa yn unig Manuel Galigeni i wneud. Dwi'n meddwl ddim wedi cael ei geni i fyta llafur, achos heb i brosesu, mae'r llafur yn mynd yn syth trwyddion nhw. Uh, so dwi'n meddwl bod fi'n cymryd beth yn bach, yn bellach, na uh, ffermio yn ei grwydd. Bach iawn i'n parnu i'r fywch, ni yn rhoi tymau bach o uh, uh, Lucerne pellets in, in the Padlo Tath um, on the Nagid, Manuka um, um, Guimon Amor, Ak Halen, uh, Kerig Halen, Nel Rinibeth. Twin, well, um, my Buisik, um, for now. Mae'r fiwch yn cael amser wedi dod galed ar y funud, y mae'n cael i feio am bopeth, ond mae'r rhif yr anifeiliaid uh, wedi sefyll rhywbeth yn debyg dros hynny gan rhif, ac mae digon haws i weld y broblem sydd i gael ar uh, gleimet a pethach fel a yw yeah. lawer fwy o fobl. Ac wedyn mae nifer o geir bob teulu, mae dwi'n mynd i'r pentre, mae'r roeth mae'n un tu a pimp i wech y geir tu allan ar ei bob un. Mae hyn, mae'r politicians mae nhw'n meddwl greit mae'r fiwch yn rhwydd i feio, ond mae'n rhaid nhw'n edrych ar ar y ceir a'r tseir a'r ffyrdd a beth yn ei wneud. Beth arall, ddwn i'n sydd mewn mlaen, ar ddiwch, wrth gwrs, yn dod i'r uh, crwd nôl i'r ddeir uh, trwy ei dom, ac uh, gallwn ni gael sleid i ddangos le mae'r uh, mae'r porfa a'r clodiaf yn ein nawr um, Mae uh, afi mlaen am y cloddiau. Um, hwnna yn bwysig iawn. Hwnna ni yn o'r llunoedd uh, dyn o'n ei allan i, I gemlyn flynedd yn ôl. Mae dau gai wedi cael ei rhoi lawr i'r ymgolchedd a ni'n podi rhy ni uh, tusiad i ifanc tŵr haf. Um, Mae llunoedd uh, y tair yn o'n ei gyd Mae nhw wedi dod a bywyd ar bywyd gwyllt o'r nadw ar brogaid ar uh, gwyddau yn y mewn yn y geia, uh, hwyed gwyllt yn nitho, a mae'n bleser yn fynd. Ystyr awr edrych yn nhw yn mae'n mynd iddo nhw. Ond yn un o'r sy'n mynd i'n ymlaen i'r uh, cloddiau, uh, ni'n edrych ar plygu a torri nhw bod pwmthig i ddau nhw blynau. Uh, beth sy'n digwydd prynu ni'n 
Kodir finns i en uh, he, uh, sidan naur, men det kan vi känna så i Savior uh, Anivili Edvini Groisinu av Gopeth. Kodir finns i en bok som sen i Nederik Lai. Ni plig i klau, tar i fordt, tar i helig i fordt, koppis i gajr. Og det er en gittlån klau i det vi ammen på omstegnene, så det er en halvestår knod, det er en gytho esklodion prenn, koid, og man har noen nål og denne går feil enn det er. Men kan ligge med skig i der de farm, siden jeg går med noen Går feg en giski er gwellt hefyd, men hwnna yn cael ei gymysgu med kompost o'n cymeru ti naw mis, a mae'r cyfan yn menol ar y tîr i godi'r carbon sy'n y ddeall i fyny, i roi gwyll gynneiau i ni ar y sylwair. Så med du nämnde han, men låt mig klara i gitt väl väl och i vena en frysa i gitt. Du är en felig dag, pamma inte ordres, en volon i färmer i tarre tarre pennekläder upp och blöjning, gedar perjant. Flail, ac mae'n neud sŵt gwmynt o ddamage. Mae'r Soil Association ar hynna yn gweith o'n i gallwn ni'n dorri e bob ail flwyddyn neu'r drydydd flwyddyn. Ond yn y fawr ni, mae hwnna'n waith na torri fe bob flwyddyn. Achos mae'r pren yn cryfach a mae'r claw yn cael cymeru fwy amser i dyddyn ôl. Ond byddai lawer gwell i llwn o fynd i dyddi a sain colli dim tîr a hefyd mae'r gwrthig yn pori y claddiau mae'n yn pori'r drysu a'r heli mae gyd yn llawn o tanin sy'n effeithio'i ystumogol yn cadw'r mythau ni fewn a lleihau bropeth mae'n mae'r Claddiau i gael ei ddiddi fel â, mae'n sequestru carbon ac hefyd mae'n bwysig i'r bywyd gwyllt. Mae'r bywyd gwyllt, fi'n gwybod bod nhw'n fewn na, mae ni'n creu coridor i'r bywyd gwyllt. Fi'n gwybod bod nhw'n na, achos mae'r ci i mynd yn ddwl a mae'n ffeil i mynd at o'n nhw, ond mae nhw'n ffeil i mynd o'n un, ben o'r ffarm i'r llall, Simhrain oedd yr allan i'r caeau a nhw'n gwybod bod nhw fewn na achos ymse ni yn mynd i blyg i claw a yn y torri ar le mae un claw yn cwrdd ar llall. Chi'n gweld le mae'r mochyn deiar wedi wneud i fusnes de yn y claw mae'n dyriant bod popeth na i'r yn y fyled i cwatw y tywelwch ac i fod yn saff. Mae amaeth i hyn wedi sy'n mynd mlaen siwt gymaint o dwi yn cael problem i weld pam mae eisiau mae'r Yn y ffiw yn gwneud, maen nhw'n gweud un peth a maen nhw'n gwneud peth arall. Maen nhw'n dyngos bod nhw'n o, maen nhw'n plannu cwbl o goed gyda nesrygrffis yn yna bictiwr bach perth y byddach. Ond ar y llaw arall, maen nhw yn gweithio er mwyn cael cadw glaeso fet a ni gyd yn gwybod. Maen nhw'n mor wenw nes, maen nhw'n gyd yn nabod. Rhywun sydd ag cancer yno fe, neu wedi colli rhywun yn y teulu ag cancer. Mae'n bwysig bod ni'n 
gweithio'r angeli mor na tiriol y gallwn ni. Mae'r colegau hefyd yn nagyd maen nhw'n neud mae dau grwt y bod ar ei o'r pentre, mae dim dim byd i maen nhw'n dod, mae'n gweithio gyda ni. Mae ddau wedi mynd trwy goleg gallu aer. So nhw wedi cael ddim gwarnod ddim lesen fach ar organig na'r ymgylchiaeth. A dwi'n credu bydd e'r rhaid hwnna newid. Sŵr dyn ni'n mynd i dysgu thermau'r i fanc i dda mewn i'r system o safio'n tîr, safio'r bywyd, cadw'r bywyd gwyllt, neu bywoliaeth o tymau bach o dîr. Os na di nhw'n cael ei dysgu yn y goleg. Mae nhw'n mynd y coleg, mae nhw'n ôl, mae nhw'n mynd dysgu hyn, doen nhw'n dysgu bopeth, ond na gyd mae nhw'n gael ei dysgu yw cynnyrchu, 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 a di hwnna ddim y ffordd ymlaen. Mae'n bwysig bod beth arall yn ei gweud bydd yr ennyf hi'w, mae nhw'n i fynnu mae'r NVZ yn beth bwysig. Os gwelwn ni dros Gymru gyfan, a fel glad i gynnyrchu bwyd i wrthi. Bydde ni fewn yn yr NVZ, bydde ni'n bonus of nadw i bachu'n bod ni'n gallu gweud we farm environmentally friendly. Mae'r PLFA ar y Mae'r welwch y troddi yma'n rhai eto, mae'r da yn cysbodi, mae nhw'n bytal dail, bytal bwyd, mae nhw'n cadw'n iach trwy'r broses. A mae dorm yn mynd o'r y tîr gyda'r dyngbyd bethach, mae'n bwysig iawn. Dwi'n rhymla yn rhan yn bach i gweld i gwir. Ond yn yn ôl i'r PLFA, mae'n beth pan gael o'n Saesneg Regenerative Agriculture drwy'n neud. So ni'n rhedig, dim ni'n gobeithio gallwn ni'n diddi digon y borfa i'r gwerthig trwy troi rhwn beth mae nhw'n gynnyrchu a troi nôl yr dom plos a'r compost yn troi fy nôl i gyd fy nôl i'r i ddod gael tyddu yn y tyriol. Mae hwnna yn wedi gweld, dros y byd e'r bynnau'n dothanol, mae'r lawer, mae'r dŵr, mae'r tîr yn dara i hunan yn lawer y gwell. Mae'r lawer mwy cryf. Sôn ni'n ôn i lot o waith yn y geia, oedd cymwyso beth o'n ni wedi neud yn y rhedrer, yn porri'r da yn bach rhy hir, felly, neu bydd e'r bynnau'n Ti'r trwm i ni, tia 29 meter ni uch na'r môr ar yr isela ac ti 40 i'r benchela ar ffarm. Beth dwi'n ffeili credu fel mae bobl yn Mae'r dwi'n byw yn ardal, le mae beth yn ni'n galw factory farms, dim doen y tri cant, ond dwi'n ei dair mil o werthau godro. Ac chi'n lle meddwl beth mae nhw'n yn ffeil goffwyd cael i fwyta, mae hyn yn ffordd o mewn o bob cron o'r wlad, dim hyn o'r Gymru, mae hyn yn dod fewn y Lloegr. Sylfaer am ei sy'n dod y Lloegr i fewn i fwydo nhw. So dwi'n meddwl bod hol troed carbon y ffarm yr litr o laeth na yn ofna dwi'n meddwl. Dwi'n meddwl bod fe mynychu'r ofna dwi. A dwi'n ddim wedi cael y carbon i gwmto ar y ffarm, ond dwi'n siŵr bod Y litr y laeth yw dwi'n cynnyrchu mae fe yn nisiel iawn o garbyn. 
es gos dwi'n gwrthyr traeth i caws gynnar ar y funud hyn. Dwi'n mynd nôl i weithio caws St. Clair yn y flwyddi newi, a popeth yn barod da ni ar y ffarm nawr, a mae'r disgwyl yr amser iawn i fy nôl. Dwi'n meddwl bod wedi ramlan â'n ddigon wedi fy ni i ffwrdd, mwyn ethebig, ble meddwl am rhywbeth arall. Ond i fi, cloddiau ar tîr i sequestri carbon a dod y bywoliaeth i ni ar deulu. Diolch y fawriol. Thanks, Elvin. Thank you very much. Um, an excellent presentation. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, fine. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Thanks very much for an excellent presentation. As you were speaking there, uh, I was jotting a few lines down um, and the words carbon sequestration, your photos of the hedgerow management and biodiversity to name but a few. I was also quite uh, nice to hear you talk about the composting of the farmyard manure and the biodiversity below the soil, not just above the soil. So many thanks for that informative presentation. Um, our, our final uh, speaker, uh, Alex uh, Higgs. Uh, Alex, who farms with her husband, Jolyon, a grassland farm with livestock. And I think I'm right in saying, Alex, you also have a farm in the Gower. And um, thank you so much for agreeing to come along today and speak. And the floor is yours, Alex. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. I've been having great trouble. I missed quite a lot. I missed quite a lot of Elvin's talk because I had to go back out and come back in. So good morning, everybody. What a beautiful morning. I've been up on the hill where I pictured there in that picture um, this morning, and it's absolutely fabulous in Mid Wales this morning, which is great. Um, as uh, uh, Hayden says, I was born in Gower and I still farm down there on a mixed farm where we grow Pick Your Own Strawberries, which has been very successful. It's been fantastic to see um, the people coming in and finding out where their fruit and also broad beans and sunflowers come from. And um, we have had a lot of help from Tubby Cymru with that enterprise down there, which is a fantastic enterprise for anyone wanting to grow uh, uh, fruit and vegetables. Up here uh, in Mid Wales, I've been farming with my husband for 40 years. Um, it's beautiful uh, countryside. Um, we farm about 400 acres. Um, our major challenge up here, unlike your previous speakers, is the topography and climate. Um, the land runs from about 600 foot to 1200 foot. Um, and sometimes up on the top, it can be very, very bleak and quite exciting uh, when it's snowing. Uh, it's 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 quite steep in places um, and the soil is quite thin on the top um, the, the, and the major, major problem up here is a very, very long winter because I can compare it with the winters in Gower and we definitely have two more, at least two more months of winter where we have to feed the stock because there is nothing growing. Because of the topography and climate, there's nothing we can do up on these hills other than grow grass and perhaps a bit of fodder crop. We're therefore limited to livestock. Um, if we move on to the next slide, you see more livestock. Um, with the livestock, uh, next slide, be lovely. With the livestock, our, one of our big challenges is the fluctuation in price of the prime cattle and the prime sheep. Uh, never from one year to another is it the same, and it's very, very difficult to plan. Um, we're at the mercy of the market. Um, and of course, the enterprise with um, cattle and sheep is long, particularly with cattle from serving the cow to selling a prime uh, animal is at 36 months. And of course, with sheep, it's eight to 12 months. So we can't change anything quickly and we're committed to the end price, whatever it is. Um, another challenge with the livestock is um, encouraging the public to value this good quality meat. Um, beef and lamb is a very good high protein, full of iron, B12, B6, zinc, selenium, and niacin, 
all of which are readily available. So meat makes a very good part of a balanced diet. You don't need to eat a lot, but it, should, and it is a good diet. Um, we saw an opportunity back about 35 years when Farm Insurance came along to join Farm Insurance very early. And this allowed us to um, join some uh, two good producer groups. Uh, we decided to go for um, producing Aberdeen Angus prime cattle. Could you change the slide, please? Um, because they're easy carving, the Angus calves, and um, easy finishing. Um, this has helped us a lot with the finishing because we don't need a lot of extra input other than the grass to finish the cattle. And we get a bonus for the Aberdeen Angus. We also joined a producer group over about 30 years ago for prime um, lambs, which the producer group has looked after as well. It's included training and trips. And we also feel with both producer groups that they value our meat. And so we love farming animals, but you know, the fact of life is that animals have to go uh, to slaughter. But it's really important that um, the slaughtering process is done properly and that the meat is valued by the customer who's taken it on. So our producer groups make the most of the meat and um, you know, always designing new um, ways of cutting lamb and everything. Um, apart from the end price, the EU subsidies have underpinned our farming for the last 40 years and they underpin a lot of Welsh farming and particularly up in the uplands here where there is such a long winter. And just out of interest, uh, we produce, I worked out, we produce about 80,000 meals of lamb beef um, a year. And of course that goes a short way to feeding Wales, which if everybody in Wales has two meals a day, we need 8 million meals a day. And, and it's important that this is never forgotten because um, at the end of the day, the population is large and they need to be fed. Um, I, the, the slides are coming in slightly the wrong order. Um, so you can see the silage there, but I'll go back to the silage. So could we move on to the next slide, please? Um, from, um, you can see on the left, our permanent pasture. Um, most of our upland ground, well, all of our upland ground is permanent pasture. So about 80% of our land is per permanent pasture. And this is managed um, with mixed grazing um, to make the most of it. And then 20% of our ground is newer lays, um, which we saw a photograph there, um, which are high sugar and clover. And they produce um, all the fodder for winter all the, the high quality silage. We make a lot of, of cuts. We do several cuts and we make a lot of high quality silage, um, which, uh, and then afterwards we have that grassland for the aftermath moth to fatten the lambs without um, any extra um, concentrate. Um, the Aberyst with um, grasses have been fantastic, as has the the new red clovers, um, and that has been a real opportunity to use the new breeds. Um, we have a lot of uh, farmyard manure as we use straw bedding, um, and this is utilised to the best. Um, we do soil sampling every four years, and we make sure that the farmyard manure is put down where we actually need it. We do use a small amount of artificial fertiliser because we're not organic. Um, we use it um, particularly on the, all the grazing ground in spring to start spring because if we don't have some kind of um, switch in the spring, spring is so late um, and of course we're lambing and we need the grass to grow the milk for the lambs. We also use um, fertiliser on the high sugar grasses. Um, we have, we feel um, with the management of our soil and um, and the testing um, and keeping the pH at pH 6.3, we have a lot of earthworms. We seem to have a lot of moles, which I think proves that there are plenty of earthworms. All the moles come from other people's farms into us and it's a continual battle. 
We also think that our carbon content of the grassland, particularly their permanent pasture, is high. But Farming Connect will soon be um, doing sampling for carbon, so it'll be interesting to see what they find. We put our name down to do that. Um, could we move on to the next slide, please? Um, uh, just going back to the feeding, we do um, buy in about 30 tonnes of barley, which comes from the other farm in Gower, which we mix with um, rapeseed mean and minerals to uh, do some winter feeding, finish cattle and for the use pre and post lambing. On to biodiversity, which again, like Lynn, is one of my favourite topics. Um, 40 years ago when I started farming, it was all about food production. Um, Post-war, we had FHDSs, which are encouraging us to increase our numbers, um, plough up land and just increase food production. And then after a few years, a few new environmental schemes appeared. Um, and we took the opportunity to use the money from the environmental schemes to put in structure in this farm, because when Joe took it on, on for 45 years ago, it had been ranched and there were no hedges, no shelter, the oak woodlands were grazed. And so using the grants, which were very well um, designed at the early grants, um, we put in infrastructure like the uh, hedge on the left wasn't even there. Um, so that has been grown and now has been laid. Uh, and we We've um, also uh, plant, we planted about five miles of hedges and we fenced out oak woodlands, which is fantastic. And we fenced out brooks, which is also a really good idea because it means that you can be sure that there's a buffer zone be between the stock and the brook and it's, it saves soil and water getting in, soil and nutrients getting in the brook. Um, with the one photo on the left is a, of the rocks in Tullock, which if anyone's been through Tullock, they have seen, because as you come down into Tullock from Reda, it's the most amazing pink in July. This was heavily grazed before Joe came here. And we've changed our management systems to enhance the environment. So on the rocks here, we've taken off the sheep, the numbers of sheep. And as you can see, it's fantastic heather. Um, and um, I think it's sorrel and other wildflowers. And it, it's full of um, lizards and butterflies and bees. And of course, a lot of birds. And we're actually standing where I was standing there taking the photograph. The peregrine flew out um, just after I'd taken the photograph and gave me quite a start. Next, next photo, please. Um, using our management of our, our, our grazing, you can see the bluebells on the left. We make sure that we never put the cattle down on this piece of ground until after the bluebells have um, set seed. And that means that the bluebells are expanding every year. The photo on the right, to most farmers, that looks like a scruffy piece of rushes. Um, but that actually is the most amazing biodiverse habitat. So we don't top it. It's in amongst the um, rushes are spear thistles and nettles. And last year I went down there and I found about 20 nests of peacock caterpillars. Um, in each nest, there must have been about 300 caterpillars. Um, so we really look after that area. This year, no peacock butterflies at all. So it just shows that just because they're not there this year, they weren't there last year. That it's also fantastic for bumblebees and bees down there. But from the distance, you can't tell that and you think it just looks scruffy, untidy farming. Um, and I'm a big advocate of a bit of scruffy, untidy farming in the right places. Um, next slide, please. Um, oh, here on the left is a butterfly on the spear thistle down in those rushes. Um, on the right is an upland peat bog um that um someone pointed out to us when we we did an agri-environment competition years ago they pointed out that this is quite a valuable piece of ground and that we'd accidentally been managing it really well otherwise full of silver birch and the cattle eat the seedlings of the silver birch and keep them down 
so rather ironically on this piece of ground you do not want trees and I think the next slides will show the flowers that are in there uh, could we go to the next slide please um, these are the flowers that are on that bulb. You can't tell in that picture, uh, but of course the ones on the left are the um, sundews that capture flies, and the one on the right is a bog asphodel. Um, and they're really precious, and it's really exciting to walk out there and see them every June. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, and now we've got a pretty picture of my dog in that bog in the summer with the cotton grass. So apart from linking um, the biodiversity to our integrated system, we also have had an opportunity back 10 years ago when there were feed-in tariffs, put in a micro hydro. And behind the cows, you can see the little hut that makes the electric. Um, it was a real challenge to put this in. Every single governmental body didn't want it to go in. Um, it, it's absolutely, you can't even see it now. It has no effect on the water in the stream, which we borrow for 600 metres. It makes 220,000 kilowatts a year. Um, in Gower, I have a PV system that I put in at exactly the same time, and the hydro has made double what the PV has made. Um, it's a fantastic system. I do not see why in Wales more systems like this aren't encouraged to be put in, because the one thing we have in Wales is water. Um, it's really good for me because I absolutely hate the rain. And now when it's raining, I just think to myself, aha, we'll be making electricity, which is great. Um, so on to the next slides, please. Um, these are my last slides because I'm just going to do a summary. Our farm... Um, we try to make the most from the land available. We try to produce high quality food from grass, which is indigestible to humans and which grows really well here in the summer. Uh, we increase the fertility of the grassland, hopefully, um, and maintaining high soil carbon by grazing the stock and returning the farmyard manure. We capture carbon in the woodlands, hedges and bogs, all the the trees around the farm are all different sizes, so some are, are big tall trees, some are uh, hedges. Um, so we feel that we have um, different levels for different um, biodiversity. We produce electricity for our own use and for export. The whole farm main helps maintain a vi vibrant local community because most of the money that we make goes back to the local community, to the merchants, the contractors. I spend it on food and, and Wellingtons. Um, so most of the food is going round in a circle, helping keep Planet Lois vibrant. We increase biodiversity, which has been very, very rewarding. Um, Joe and I sat down in June and we just quietly for a minute and we thought to ourselves, this is just fantastic how much more biodiversity we've produced over the last 40 years and how lucky we are to live in such a beautiful place. We aim to protect the brooks and the rivers from pollution and soil contamination and, you know, take great care with them. And as I say, we have buffer zones. We've raised a healthy family here on this farm and had great fun doing it. And I think they've um, grown up to be well-rounded people. Um, we enjoy, we really enjoy what we do. Um, and as most farmers, if you don't enjoy what you do, that you wouldn't be farming anymore. So it's like the hardcore farmers are left. Um, but that is the most important thing to us is that every day, except perhaps some days when it's raining, it's a fantastic thing to go out and farm. So the future, what is the future? I mean, I've got the future there on the right, which is new calf but the problem with farming is there are continually increased costs coming towards us um, and particularly now in the last three months um, the, the price of machinery goes up much more than inflation um, the the cost of most of our inputs has recently gone up can we get higher prices of our food i fear not the competition with the supermarkets pushes the price of the food down all, all the time and of course, government is just keen to keep the price of food down so that the people are relatively content. 
Should we increase the numbers of the, on this farm? Well, I'm loath to increase the numbers on this farm. I feel quite a lot of farms are much too overstocked at the cost of biodiversity. And, you know, we are leaving these farms for the next generation and we want to leave them rich with biodiversity. Diversification. Um, on both farms we've diversified. Um, and how much time have we got to spread our, ourselves between lots of different enterprises? Hopefully, there will be a well thought out, fair, easy to access Welsh Government scheme to underpin farmers and to help when end prices change and the weather is cruel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much. I hope you can hear me. Um, I just wanted to say that. Was yeah, that's wonderful, lovely. Wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, Alex. I, I was writing a few. Uh, notes as you were speaking and I, I'm, I'm just hesitating otherwise I could ramble on forever here but what was what was wonderful was that you started with the challenges of the upland which of course we linked into with the previous speaker um, but it was so nice to see how you manage your farm and I'm including your lays your um, woodland your biodiversity the rocks you, you were saying you actually actively manage it within the system of farming that you are actually performing uh, moving the stock on and off and it was uh, a wonderful example of what can be done uh, with the right people and incentives so I, I thought that was fascinating and um, very envious of your hydro system so that is excellent thank you so much I'm going to check to see if um, we've got anything from the chat uh, that needs picking up before I ask the panelists a question. Um, yeah, I, I can see somebody's coming. I think Phil Hollington's come in. Do you have any problems, Alex, with Bog Asphodel, with the sheep? Um, well, we never put the sheep on, on the bog. It literally is only grazed by the cattle in the autumn. I mean, it's, it's uh, from a farming point of view, pretty useless. It's just part of our farm and we try and manage it to the best of our ability. Thanks, Alex. I'm conscious that I've got to watch the time. But um, what I would like to ask each of the panelists is just one question and before anybody would like to come in with a question. Um, my question is, and I think it came out in your presentation, Alex, Elvin's particularly, it came as a common theme. Without the animals, where would you see the system that you currently employ? And I'm not talking of economically, I'm talking perhaps wider here on the biodiversity as much. So perhaps, Elvin, could I ask you that question whilst I check the chat? Well, Without the animals, I'm afraid there is no system of farming. Uh, we have lived with the animals for thousands of years. We've tamed these particular uh, animals to provide food for ourselves. Um, as I'm looking at uh, um, the vegan aspect of farming, uh, that we have to plough, grow vegetables, and then allow them to import soya from all over the world uh, to have any sort of protein, where the protein that we produce from our animals, milk, beef, and everything else is natural and will contain all the goodness and vitamins that we require. Uh, there is no way forward other than with animals and unfortunately sometimes we have to uh, get them slaughtered and eaten but uh, that has been going on since man got off his four uh, hands and knees and got up and ran to catch his prey um, that is life I'm afraid. Uh, Alex before I ask Glyn the same question I see you are managing your animals within the environment. You said you don't put them in with the bluebells, obviously, but there are things that you're doing actively to discourage and encourage on the farm. 
the animals within the system. Can I ask you, without the animals, how, how you, your view would be with the management of, of the farm? Well, without the animals in, in the mid Wales, there would be no farming. <laughs> um, and, you know, people come to mid Wales and they come to Wales to see the countryside of Wales. And the countryside of Wales is made um, by farmers over the last hundreds of years and involves animals. It's always involved animals. Um, and the, the way forward is to start to, to look at the animals, not just as um, uh, the end product, but to use them more to shape the land. Um, you know, use them imaginatively, like I said before, with the bogs and things like that. And, you know, there's definitely a feeling for that because that's what they do in all the wildlife trusts and things with belted galloways and things. But every farm could just to use the animals for biodiversity while at the same time making money. Yeah, just a fair point. Thank you. Glyn, I've given you a gap there to think up your answer, but how do you see it, Glyn? Um, well, it's it's a life cycle, isn't it? You know, at the end of the day, it's it's... It's how the world works, you know, um, it's just that, that complete cycle, you know, we are growing crops and growing crops, crops successfully, but without animals, we wouldn't have the feed on the farm, you know, and, and the idea of us being self-sufficient in, in, in nutrients is great, but take them, take them animals away and, and uh, that is lost. And I'm afraid that... It, with any farming system, it has to have nutrients from somewhere, whether they're brought in or mined, which is what happens in a lot of these arable systems. Um, without animals, a, a self-sufficient type of food and sustainable food is, is, is near impossible, in my view. Thanks, Glenn. Is, is there any questions, anybody uh, in the audience would like to ask a question to any of the panellists? Take it that's no, uh, nobody's got a question. I, I could ask one if that's okay. Yeah, fine, Steve, yeah. Just, it was, well, it's on the economics. Where do you all think it's going? I know that's a big question, but <laughs> Alex mentioned the pressure. Um, and both Glyn and Elvin have eloquently described the need for livestock and, and obviously so has Alex in order to cycle the nutrients and keep the hills alive. But um, where are we going with the economics? Do you think it's, um, is there a chance for optimism perhaps with the Welsh Government's new farming schemes? Uh, Alex, would you like to answer that and Glyn? Um. Well, we'd all like higher prices for our food. Um, you know, it, food is at the low, you know, people spend the least amount of the, their earnings on food ever now. Um, but as I said, I, it's very difficult to push the price of food up. So I, I, we'd like to stand alone and not need any subsidy, but I can't see, some, you know, particularly us in the uplands managing without subsidy. But I just hope this new scheme is going to be fair and accessible to all the farmers because, um, you know, there's lots of really good young farmers out there who borrowed lots of money, who are really progressive, who are doing what everyone talked about yesterday, data capture and all this, um, and great expense, you know, covering their, covering their slurry stores. And, you know, we've got to keep these people on the land, the youth of tomorrow on the land, and they've got to earn a good enough income to want to stay here. Um, so um, part of me is optimistic. People need food. As I said, if there's 60 million people in the UK, we need 120 million meals a day. Um, but, you know, it's going to be really important to make sure sure that we keep the youth here by using the subsidy the Welsh Government is going to produce fairly so that everyone gets it. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. I, I, just a quick sub-question before I go to um, Glyn and then finally Elvin on the same uh, question. Uh, Martin's come in in the chat. What would it take to stop you using nitrogen fertiliser? How does that one sit? Um, well, of course, the price has gone up, which is a bit of a shock. Um, difficult one there. 
I, you know, on both farms, it's a difficult one. You know, organic, as Hayden always says, the organic market is pretty full because you need a premium if you're going to be organic. And the producer, the, uh, the population of Britain, only about 10% are interested in organic and probably only 30% of the population are interested in where their food comes from. So without a premium price for the food, taking away the nitrogen will be very difficult. It's definitely going to be a case that um, the price of nitrogen will cause innovation. Um, it's quite interesting on the strawberries. A lot of the sprays have been taken away from the strawberries. So we're lo losing a lot of biological control on the strawberries. Um, and all the time new things are being designed. But money leads to And so I can um, research so that we don't need so much nitrogen. Uh, let's hope okay. nitrogen comes cheaper again. <laughs> but I, I can see with your uh, clovers and things, Alex, you are actually um, pushing some of those, you know, the herbal A's and the, uh, and the clovers. So, yeah. OK, thanks. Thanks for that. Question, Elvin, do you have a question? Beth y'r cyngor byddwch chi'n rhoi i ffermwyr ifanc i dyfodol yn y systemau sydd yn integreiddio da byw ond hefyd yn amddiffyn ar amgylchedd? Wel, dwi yn meddwl bydd rhaid bobl ifanc, ffermwyr ifanc, cael eu dysgu gwlogau ar amgylchiaid, ar ffordd i fwyd, ar Tyn i'n ôl o cynyrchu, cynyrchu, fy rhaid i gynyrchu, mae'r meddwl o ddau'r diwedd yr yfyrd ddiwethaf, fy rhaid i gael tîr, fy rhaid i gynyrchu, gwmyd y gallwn ni, fel dwi'n credu gallwn ni gynyrchu, dwi'n dod i'n ôl, fy rhaid i gymeryd cam na ddau am nôl i cael mynd ymlaen. A mae'n rhaid y bobl i ddweud sy'n mynd y colegau i cael eu dysgu, i fod ffordd arall i gael sydd ddim i gynnyrchu trwy amser. Ddim i dyddi meis a ddim i dyddi i ddo mewn a soia o China neu America neu Brasil neu rhywbeth yla. Ffordd mae'n rhaid cael ffermio crwn. Popeth i ar y ffarm a mynd ôl y ffarm a'r cynnyrch yn Mae'n allan i'r coeoedd i fyta. Amser o'n un tyddi, yn meddwl bod yma amser o'n un tyddi, amser o'n un tyddi lan y cyn bod mi'n gadael, oedd y pentre mae'n un yn sancler, oedd ddim un lle bwyta yna, a nawr fel mae hyd yn gwybod, mae Chinese, Doi Indian, pizzas a lawer yn un arall. Yn dyngwys bod nôl yn saith degau byw oedd McCain's a'r hynna yn cymraso bod i'r gyfamant i wneud y ffwrdd a home economics a dysgu plant i goginio. Os gewn i nôl, mae'n do nôl dan bwys bach yn ôl speciality fine food magazine, mae bobl ifanc yn mynd i'r Bwtwriad independent, mae hwnna'n sain gweddol, a peidio rileio ar yr afachmerdau swper. Ond mae'r rhain i ddyn ôl, sy'n rhain i gynnyrchu, mae'r rhain i creu fferm sy'n blyserol i fyw ynddo fe, ac codi bwyd i'r ta. Na fe, yn sydd â fi ar feddwl. Thank you, Alvin. Um, Stephen, I'm conscious we're past our allotted time at the moment. Is that correct? You are. Do you want to take a quick question? John Butler's got his hand up. Yeah, please. Yeah. John. Okay, I just want to ask about, uh, you know, how, how, how can this meat from these good farms be marketed? Because... I only buy pasta fed beef, I'll only, but I mean, to actually uh, get hold of um, meat that you know has been brought up 
doing well on farms that uh, that uh, value biodiversity and one thing and another. Uh, it doesn't seem to be in Wales. The number of outlets um, for for selling this kind of product online and it's very difficult to access the food in Wales, although it's obviously being produced by yourselves. That, that's an excellent point, John. That really is an excellent point. Alex, do you have any idea? Because I think what John's point is, all that we spoke of today, but then if the meat just goes into a, 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 a abattoir without the story, then it's lost. Um, Yes, it's very difficult. You know, if you go back to when I started farming, there were abattoirs all over Wales and regulation, EU regulation or whatever, you know, health and safety regulation, environmental regulation. They've shut all those abattoirs down. So it's only major abattoirs. I mean, we in Llanidloy still have two good butchers where you can go and ask where do the cattle come from, um, which is good. Um, and but it's really difficult for farmers to actually slaughter and, um, you know, sell their own meat. Everybody wants certain bits and nobody wants other bits. So it's very difficult to get the value out of it. Um, but, you know, the local butchers are the best place to go, wherever the local butchers, I know there's good ones in Hay, um, Brecon, you know, Abergavenny, Go to the local butchers and ask them, and ask them for the provenance they should have, actually, the passport of the animal, yeah, if, I, if they're good butchers. I live in Gwyneth, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. um, Gwyneth. Oh, yeah. I don't know Gwyneth. <laughs> I, I suppose it's the, the also the, one of the other methods is probably through an accredited scheme. Um, whether it is, uh, you know, Elvin, you've touched on uh, soil association standards, uh, leaf standards, so there is that about it, um, but it is very difficult. Uh, any comment, Glenn, on that? Okay, you know, at, and, well, uh, on, on provenance of food. But, yeah, how John's point was how, you know, talking through today on some of the wonderful stuff that's going on farm, how can you discern... Yeah. When you go to buy the end it is it, the the problem. You're, you're, you're right, uh, Hayden. You know the story with goes with the pro with the product. It does get lost, uh, you know, when it when it travels away from the area it was produced on. Uh, it's a really sad thing, but it should it should it should carry the story wherever it is and wherever it's eaten and sold in the world. You know mm. the problem that we have, as Alex has said. You know, um, we ha we don't have. The, the abattoirs, uh, we have one in Hanford West, fortunately, but that's, you know, that's full. You know, it, we, it, the, the animals need to go away just to be processed, even if they come back. It's quite... Yeah. It, yeah. Okay, uh, thanks, Glenn. And um, I'm just quickly looking uh, down the chat. Um, uh, There's some good points from, in the chat. Yeah, um, Martin Peck has drawn our attention to a research paper. We're recording all of the sessions and all being well, all of the chat, and we will try and put that across to you all. Uh, in the next few weeks, we'll put the recordings, once we've gone through all the footage, up on the uh, conference YouTube channel. Okay. Th thanks, Stephen. I, I, I'm, I'm aware we've gone past our allotted time. Yeah. So for the people who are in the chat, I, I offer my apologies. Um, I think what is really fantastic here is that uh, the speakers could be kept for another half an hour. Uh, to, to, but um, we have our allotted time. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to draw the session to a close. But before I do so, can I offer my personal thanks to Alex Higgs, Glyn Jones and Elvin Davis for what was some three wonderful presentations and for sharing both their time uh, and their farming systems with us. So can I just pass you my sincere thanks, the three of you today for uh, speaking to us all. And with that, Stephen, I will hand back to you and uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed the session and I'm pleased to hear you will pick up the points raised in the chat. Great stuff, thank you. Thanks all, really good session. 
Thank you. Good.